My family left Korea when I was seven years old, and I never really took the time to learn its history and culture until a few years ago. You probably know of Korea as two different countries, as North and South Korea. But relative to its overall history, which begins as early as 700 BC, this is a fairly recent occurrence. And actually for much of its history, it's been attacked and controlled by foreign forces and has had to constantly fight for independence. And today I'm gonna to be sharing a project that I did in my fourth year of architecture school that's taught me a bit about the painful history of Korea and and has made me think a little deeper about the meaning of a shared identity, as well as the role of architecture in addressing complex cultural and political conflicts. In 1910, Korea was invaded and colonized by Japan until 1945, when Japan was defeated by the Allied forces in the Second World War. Korea was liberated from Japanese rule, but the US and the Soviet Union both wanted a piece of Korea. So they decided that the country would be split in half, the Soviets occupying the North and the Americans occupying the South. They simply drew a line across the map and decided to divide the country along the 38th parallel which has now become the DMZ. Of course, the Koreans didn't get a say in any of this. The Soviets helped elect a communist guerrilla leader into office, and the Americans helped a US-educated democratic leader into office. Since then, both the North and South desperately wanted a united Korea, but of course, under their own rule and political regime. And there was a lot of tension between the two sides. In 1953, the North Korean leader tried to overthrow the South Korean government in an attempt to unify the two countries, which led to the Korean War, pitting Koreans against Koreans. Since then, the two countries have been in a perpetual state of war, forcing young Korean men in their 20s into mandatory military service for 18 months, leaving a pretty big gap in its economy and social structure. If you're a fan of Korean dramas, this also sometimes serves as a convenient resolution to the plot. So while the two countries still use the same language, they've diverged on pretty much all aspects, including political ideology, culture, and economy. For most South Koreans, reunification is an unrealistic, impractical, and even a contentious idea. The vast majority of the South Korean population today, especially the younger generation, oppose reunification. Just until the late 90s, there was around 80% support from South Koreans for reunification. But a poll in 2011 showed that the number had been reduced to 56%. 통일이 되면 좋겠지만 저희 시대에는 안 됐으면 좋겠다고 다들 생각할 것 같아. 왜요? 아무래도 이렇게 합쳐지게 되면 지금 당장은 손해 가는 것도 많을 거고 사회적 문제가 더 복잡해지지 않을까 싶기도 하고요. 당장 이렇게 무리를 해서 통일을 일으키는 통일을 하는 거는 네, 나중을 대비해서는 당장 생각하기에는 좋지는 않다고 생각해요. 다른 젊은 이게 한국 사람들도 그렇게 많이 생각을 하는 것 같아요? 그런 것 같아요. 저희 그 거의 통일에 대한 생각이 근데 별로 없죠. 통일하면 뭔가 더 복잡해질 것 같은 느낌. 지금도 편한데. 네. 너무 차이가 벌어지는 것도 있고 또돈 돈도 많이 들것 같고 그래야 될것 같으니까. People in my grandparents' generation, however, still have long lost family members on the other side of the border. This is a footage from a rare reunion in 2018 that was granted by the North Korean government. <laughs> The families were reunited after 70 years and were given 11 hours together over the time span of three days to see each other, with no repeat visits allowed. The families were selected based on a lottery, and there are 56,000 Koreans on the waiting list to be picked for visits like this. 
Every year, around 3,000 of these people die, reducing the number of families waiting to be reunited. This event was the result of a government-led process towards reunification, which was started in 2000 in the June 15th North-South Joint Declaration, where both governments agreed to promote reunification in their respective countries. I also remember pretty clearly as a kid in elementary school, learning about our friendly neighbors in the North and learning songs about reunification. Practical and economic concerns aside, in instances when the two Koreans meet, it's been shown over and over again that it's an unexplainable emotional experience. Oh, <laughs> 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 Reunification still remains a very lofty goal, something on the very far horizon for both nations. One of the efforts to strengthen the North-South relations was the push to create industrial and economic ties by establishing areas like the Kaesong Industrial Park, which would allow South Korean companies to employ cheap labor in North Korea, while creating jobs and income for the North Korean economy. Two years after its opening, the number of North Korean staff hit 10,000 workers a year after it doubled, and in 2012, it reached over 50,000. The accumulated earnings from goods produced at the complex rose from some 100 million U.S. dollars in 2007 to $2 billion in 2013. The park is located 10 kilometers north of the DMZ, and it's the only direct road and rail access between North and South Korea. The DMZ the Korean demilitarized zone, is an incredibly unique condition of its own. It's been a four-kilometer buffer between North and South Korea since the Korean War in 1953, and this restricted land hasn't been altered by human hands for the past 70 years, and as a result, has created a natural paradise for an incredibly diverse range of animal and plant species that have pretty much vanished in many other parts of the world. However, the barbed wire fence that runs along the DMZ is impenetrable, not only for people, but also for animals, and this has created a fragmented landscape between the two mega-ecosystems, limiting the possibility of further growth. When connected, the ecosystem has huge environmental possibilities, and as a whole could become the starting point for a natural wildlife corridor extending to the rest of Asia. In 2014, during my fourth year studio, we were given a project brief, which was to create a border crossing between any two countries. I decided on the border between North and South Korea, uh, not just for personal reasons, but for the complex social, economic, and environmental conditions. 
Based on my research, I wanted to create a commercial border crossing on the existing road to the industrial region, but at the same time wanted to address the separation of the wildlife corridor by the barbed wire fence. The separation of the wildlife corridor by the road connecting the industrial regions by also introducing an animal crossing. This animal crossing would be structurally supported by public observation towers on either sides of the border. As the two buildings hold up and connect the broken wildlife corridors in four directions, it would, first of all, provide a public attraction that would allow us to admire the wildlife, let us witness the economic activity that's happening, and at the same time, provide a place where we can gaze over to the other side of the border, where in the least, it could be the beginning of some kind of kindred emotions. This actually isn't my typical process for designing a building, but on this project, there was a descriptive word that kept coming to my mind as I mulled over the conditions. In Korean, you would call this kinjang loosely translating into tension. Tension, Merriam-Webster describes as state of latent hostility or opposition between individuals or groups. It's also described as inner striving, unrest, or imbalance, often with physiological indication of emotion. It's also the act or action of stretching, or the condition or degree of being stretched to stiffness. And finally, it's either of two balancing forces causing or tending to cause extension. Of course, the bridge would be in most parts self-supporting with a substantial structure, but I felt like the symbolic gesture of the two buildings holding up the bridge even in some minor way, added a powerful narrative that I didn't really want to compromise. And the motion of pulling and tension in large part drove the design of the individual buildings as I went through multiple iterations. The two buildings are identical and they torque as it goes up, which means that each floor plate rotates at an angle, providing unique views on each floor like views to the mountains, views to the city on the other side of the border, views to the building across the border, views to the animal crossing, and we also have views for the border control. Maybe the possibility of a united Korea is long gone. Maybe the two countries have drifted way too far apart that reunification is an unrealistic proposition. But our history is always a part of us. And if nothing else, maybe it could at least provide a place where people can experience the beautiful surroundings and reflect on our collective memory and ponder on what it means to have a shared identity.